Well, welcome again, Facebook friends. I know we have listeners from viewers from all over the world, United States. Um, we have a lot of viewers from the Philippines, from the Caribbean, from Europe. I just want to welcome you to Get Healthy with Dr. Cooper. You know, this week has been very, very busy for me. We hosted the first lifestyle medicine seminar in South Texas. You see here in South Texas, we have a large population of um, our citizens with obesity and diabetes and hypertension. A lot of our patients are young. And over the last several years, I have been focusing on educating and inspiring my community on how to live a healthier lifestyle. And I've taken that a little further. I have put my information in books and videos, and um, I've developed TV shows and now Facebook Live. My goal is to reach beyond my local community. My goal is to reach worldwide, global reach. Because I know that as a practicing physician, practicing medicine for over 27 years, that the most powerful disease modifying factor it's really not medications, but it's a healthy lifestyle. And that is what I want to sell to you today. Of course, you're not going to pay me any money. This information is totally free, and the information is evidence-based, meaning, therefore, that studies have shown that lifestyle medicine is the number one to improving, preventing, or treating chronic diseases. You know, recently, a friend of mine, I think from Peru, sent a link about teaching lifestyle medicine in medical schools. You see, when I was studying medicine in the 80s, we were not taught lifestyle medicine. We were taught something about nutrition, vitamins, what vitamins uh, are important in the body, and the lack of these vitamins, what diseases they'll produce. But in terms of lifestyle medicine, that wasn't taught. Now, during the seminar, I opened with this concept that I grew up in the 60s. And when I was a child, there were many, many um, patients with measles and mumps, smallpox, polio, these infectious diseases that we don't see anymore. They're almost totally eradicated in most of the world. Why? Because of immunization, vaccination. Now, I believe that the vaccine for chronic diseases, it's a healthy lifestyle. You know, one of the um, speakers at the event on Wednesday spoke about cardiovascular disease or hypertension, that people are still dying. People are dying, he mentioned 2,200 people die per year as a result of heart disease. And these patients are patients on medications. We have lots of drugs. We have pharmaceutical agents or companies with a lot of medications. We have large hospitals and first-class doctors and nurses, rapid ambulances, but yet we are dying every day. What is the solution? How can we put an end to chronic diseases? Can you answer that? I'm sure you probably are baffled, but really the answer is very simple. Though making the change could be daunting and difficult, but a healthy lifestyle, healthier nutrition, exercise, rest, stress management, all these factors have proven to improve health, reverse diseases, even cancer. So that is why I've dedicated my life to educating and teaching. You see here in the Rio Grande Valley, I practice medicine here in South Texas. I have an office in Edinburgh on Monte Cristo Road, one on Nolana and the other one on McCall Road. And the emphasis is on education. You know, I have 
weekly cooking classes. But there's some patients who have it difficult to prepare the meals. And therefore, my most recent uh, project is I created a, a whole nutrition section of Cooper Wellness Center where we produce organic healthy juices, meal preps, all plant-based for those of you who really want to do the change but are having difficulty. I have written books. I have some books here, for example, Incredibly Delicious Vegan. This is a uh, recipe book and I have about 100 healthy plant-based recipes here. I have written another book, Get Healthy for Life. And then 14 Days to Amazing Health. I have pa put in these books information that will help you become healthier. But you must take action. The secret to good health, longevity, and a happy life will be revealed on the show today. But if you don't take action, then the information will have no use to you. So on Wednesday, we had several international doctors here. We had maybe 20, 31 international guests, doctors, medical students, dietitian that attended our conference. And of course, we had many local residents. We had about 200 people sitting in the conference. These were doctors and nurses, dietitian, health seekers, patients, just about everyone who really want to learn how to be healthy. You know, we mentioned that in this world, we have five areas that are called blue zones. These are areas in which people live to 100 and beyond. These people in the blue zones have common factors, factors like nutritional factor, exercise, rest, uh, a sense of community, uh, a sense of purpose, trust in God. One of those blue zones are right here in the United States. Now, in South Texas, McAllen Mission, Texas, where I live and practice medicine, we are number one fattest. So therefore, we have many chronic diseases. The idea then is to educate and form a community, get a team together that will work to educate our citizens here in Rio Grande Valley on how to move from the sickest to the healthiest. And for you, my listeners all over the world, you can do the same thing. I am very passionate, as you can see, about educating you on how to use healthier lifestyle to prevent or improve your health. I want you to share the page, like the page. If you really believe that this information is viable or practical or essential for good health, then why are you going to keep it to yourself? Why not share the information? So like and share and subscribe to this page. I plan to bring you information from the uh, summit we had recently. Our main speaker, keynote speaker, Dr. Wayne Dysinger from Loma Linda University. He's the chairman for the American College of Lifestyle Medicine. He spoke on why healthy lifestyle is important, why nutrition is medicine. And I'm going to bring you some excerpts, very short, from his presentation. So let's go to Dr. Dysinger, and then I'll come back and talk to you again. So like and share the page as we listen to Dr. Dysinger. Uh, get people to change their lifestyles. And if they do change their lifestyles, uh, that doesn't stick. Uh, so the, they'll change it, but it becomes a short-term change. So uh, this is a study, this actually, this study has nothing to do with lifestyle. Um, it's looking at people who had a heart attack and looking at how well they continue taking their medications after a heart attack. So when, you're, when you have a heart attack, 
you're, it's recommended that you're started on a statin to lower your cholesterol, a beta blocker to slow your heart rate down, and an ACE inhibitor to, to help your, your, you with uh, heart function. Uh, so these people had a heart attack, all of them were prescribed these medications, and then over time, less and less of them kept taking them. So, so you can see actually um, here at about 18 months, there was about 70% of the people that were still taking their medication. You get clear out to 36 months and it's closer to, to 40% or so. Um, but at 18 months, about 70% are still taking their medication. So the point is people don't take their medications the way they're prescribed either. And then if you, if you move to this study, which is a lifestyle medicine study, so this was the, the CHIP program, which was an intensive lifestyle change program. So these people changed uh, went through this CHIP program, uh, they changed their lifestyle dramatically, um, and then what we did is we measured how well they changed their lifestyle at 18 months. So um, if you look here, th this is the percent that were still physically active at eight months, the, the percent that were still uh, decreasing their total calories, they were eating more fruits and vegetables, they were eating less uh, saturated fat, more fiber, etc. And it's interesting because this is also in the neighborhood of 70%. So you can say lifestyle medicine doesn't work, and that's true. 18 months out, uh, only about 70% of people were still uh, achieving the lifestyle changes that, that were recommended in this program. This, this program was a four-week program, so uh, 18 months out, uh, there was... 70% that were still uh, achieving their lifestyle changes. But that's no better or that's no worse than medications, right? So if, if lifestyle medicine doesn't work, then medicine doesn't work. And we were just, uh, I was talking with uh, uh, Dr. Grimalt, the next speaker, uh, earlier about how if you're spending six, seven, eight thousand dollars a month on, I mean, not a month, a year on healthcare, which is what most employers are spending for their employees, we should be having lifestyle available. You can do the CHIP program now for $125, $125 for the CHIP program. What do you think it costs for a medication uh, for diabetes or a medication for your high blood pressure? Why not do this program? I'm sorry, this program, instead of prescribing these medications, uh, it, it actually is, has better results as far as disease reversal um, and costs way less. So we need to be doing this kind of thing more. All right, guys. So he was making the point there that many patients who have diseases do not take their medication. Why not then use lifestyle, eat healthier, exercise and rest. Let me take some time to welcome some people that have joined us. I have some family members here. My cousin Pauline Wells from the Bahamas, welcome. Norma, my cousin from New York, welcome. Edgar, my chef. Hi, Edgar, welcome. Doreen Thomas, we went to high school together. I want to welcome you. My sister Rosemary Maria Garcia, Laura Palomares, I want to welcome you. Please like and share the page. So lifestyle medicine, what is lifestyle medicine? When we talk about lifestyle medicine, we talk about behavior. Behavior that you have now developed into habits and you will care for the rest of your life. So we talk about healthy lifestyle. We're talking about healthy eating habits. What do you eat? How much of it do you eat? When do you eat and when not to eat? That's one thing. The other is, do you move? Your bodies were made to move. So do you exercise? You know, studies have shown that those patients who exercise will lower the risk for many diseases, diabetes, heart disease, cancer, and many other, obesity. Now, how do you manage stress? Do you panic? Do you allow the stress to cause you not to sleep or to give you hypertension? So how do you manage your stress? What's your, your, your faith structure? Do you have um, 
a faith community. Now, how do you relate with your family members? Do you have good relationship? All these are important for good health because the definition for health is, you know, WHO, World Health Organization, gives a really good definition for health, which is health is not only the absence of physical ailment, but mental, emotional, and social um, well-being. All that is health. You know, a lot of us as healthcare providers, doctors, nurse practitioner, physician assistants, we do not have the time to sit and evaluate patients' total well-being. So someone might come in the office and they say, you know, doc, I have been drinking a lot of water, I'm thirsty a lot, I'm losing weight, I'm going to the restroom, and now the diagnosis of diabetes is made. Then that healthcare provider might not have enough time to discuss the most important treatment option, which is lifestyle. So then the patient is placed on a pill, metformin or whatever the pill is, or insulin, and sent home to be evaluated again. So healthy lifestyle is what we need to focus on as healthcare providers. And this program is to empower you, the viewer, you the patient who might have the disease, that you cannot be totally dependent on the healthcare provider. But you have to be vested in your problem you need to be educated on how you're going to make the changes and become healthier. Dr. Dysinger continued to speak about what to eat. He said, if you want to be healthy, you must eat food, not much of it, and mostly plant. You, you understand that? Eat, but don't overeat. Eat plant-based food now, we're not asking everyone to become vegan. We know that that is a little impossible. That's what I would like. However, if you eat mostly the healthier food and stay away from the processed food, the sugars and the salts and the fats, then you will be moving towards a healthier lifestyle. Let's listen to what Dr. Dysinger had to say about food as medicine. Food, not too much, mostly plants. So seven words, eat food, not too much, mostly plants. If we just stuck to this, then we'd be okay food-wise. If we just stuck to this, we wouldn't have this kind of graph that we talked about this morning. If we just stuck to that concept of eat food, not too much, mostly plants. Let's dig into that a little bit more. So food, we, 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 he has the term mostly plants in there, but this is talking about that first one, eat food. But what is this? This is a plant, this is a cheese factory. So when he says eat food, he's talking about this kind of food from this kind of plant, not this kind of food from this kind of plant. So another way of looking at it, this is a typical diet for a typical American for a week. So all of this is what this American family ate in a week. And if you look at that, how much of it is fresh food, something that's really food versus something that's processed, right? A, a, a couple grapes there. But most of this is packages and it's processed food. That's what's getting us in trouble. That's what's causing, sorry, I'm going the wrong direction. Um, that's what's causing, if I get the right slide, this. It's that processed food that's causing this. I'll say that again, it's the processed food that's causing this. That's what we need to be getting rid of. We need to be going towards food that comes from fields, not food that comes from factories. We need to be moving away from this as the typical American diet 
and more towards this as a typical American diet. Okay, so that's that's lesson one number one. It's not easy to do, but that's it's worth trying hard to do that. Okay, so that's eat food. How about not too much? So just a, a few quick slides. Look at how serving sizes have changed. This is over 50 years. These are fast food servings, so we shouldn't be eating any of this anyways. But for those of those people who do eat some of this, look how many more you're getting in, in French fries, your bigger your burger. Alrighty, so did you get the point? Eat food, mostly plant, and not too much. And remember, not the food producing the plant, but actually a plant-based diet. Now, during the, the summit, many of the speakers spoke about the reason for the chronic disease epidemic, the reason for the obesity epidemic, that in 1970, the average American consumed about 2,000 calories per day. As we continue to in 2008, we were consuming 500 calories more per day. And if you know the amount of calories to produce one pound of weight is 3,500. Now, if we started to consume 500 calories more per day, in seven days, we will then gain that one pound of weight. And why are we consuming so much calorie? Well, the calorie-dense food, the food like snack foods and fried foods, packaged foods, even though you might think I'm consuming a small quantity, a small amount, but that amount is packed with calories. Now, in one tablespoonful of um, oil, one tablespoonful of oil will give you an extra 110 calories. So if you were to consume food, fried foods, deep fried foods, then you know you're going to add on calories. So what should you do then? Because this program is really to give you the tools to work with to change your lifestyle. What should you do? What should you eat? You might be wondering. You know, there are many people on the internet or on the radio giving information what to eat. But you have to check your sources and make sure that you're listening to the right voices. So then, processed food. If you're going to be consuming rice, for example, make sure that you're consuming brown rice. Brown rice is not processed. White rice is processed. Flour or, or products made from flour, you should try to move towards whole wheat flour. Sugars, stay away from sugars. Sugars are high in calories. So you want to stay away from that because the high calories will lead to increased weight. Increased weight will then increase your risk for diabetes, hypertension, heart disease, cancer. Women that are overweight and obese, you have a six-fold increase in having endometrial cancer, cancer of the uterus, and a three-fold increase in having cancer of the breast. And men, if you're listening to you, you might be wondering, I don't have a uterus and I don't have breast. You have a prostate. And if you are overweight and obese, you also increase the risk for prostate cancer. So then, you need, we all need to start eating or consuming a healthier meals or now. We know nutritional factor is the most important factor to losing weight and improving health. But what about exercise? You know, we had this wonderful speaker, Dominique Gumalt. She's German and she teaches at Angers University. She was one of her keynote speakers speaking about exercise as medicine. And believe me, she moved the audience. You're going to understand what I'm, what I'm saying when I say she moved the audience. Let's listen to Dominique. No, that was too fast. Clap. 
clap and heal because we don't have music. The music's in my head right now. There we go. And four, good. Three, two, one, and clap, clap, heal, heal, heal. One more time. Last time. Here we go. And four, three, good. Two, one, and clap, clap, and heal, heal, heal. Going back. And four, three, two, one and clap, clap and heal, heal. Good, heal. Fantastic. Good job. Well done. Give yourself a hand. Good work. Good work. So now, now most of you, this is what's happening. Very interesting. This is a social experiment. So now people are like, oh, I'm done. I can sit down again. Ah, that's what some of you did. I saw you do it. <laughs> that's okay. I'm glad you did it. My accident wouldn't work otherwise. No. So now, for the rest of the time, I'm going to give you a choice, just like Dr. Dysinger said already. Um, Obviously, if you'd like to sit, sit, you, you can make a free choice, whatever you want to do. But if you choose to not want to sit right now, that's fine. If you choose to stand or move around, just kind of go to the side, all right, so that everybody can see. So whatever you feel comfortable with doing, go ahead and do. Do I have a clicker by any chance? That would be great. Thank you. Right there. Okay, thank you so much. Fantastic. So I want to talk with you. So if you're going to keep standing, just move to the side so people can see, all right? Fantastic. Okay, and pr by the way, I will not judge you if you do sit, okay? That's totally fine. So I want to talk this morning to you about the global epidemic that we are a part of and that we see as it relates to physical activity and exercise. And then this afternoon, we're going to talk more practically on how we can tackle this particular issue. This morning, you received a wonderful introduction to what lifestyle medicine is, the big picture of it. So now we will tackle, as we go through the day, individual topics that relate to lifestyle medicine and just look at it in a little bit more detail. So my job is to talk about this concept of exercise and physical activity being medicine. So um, let's see if this works. Choo -choo. There we go. Oh, sorry. Here we go. All right. So um, some of you are choosing to stand um, as, as, as you're already doing, which is lovely. And those of you that are sitting, so I'm only giving you two options. I do this with my students anywhere I speak. Anytime we're somewhere and we gather, there's two options. Either, number one, you can practice what I call active sitting, or you can do active standing. But you can't just sit or just stand. That's not an option, so I'm giving you two. So I'm gonna start with the sitters. If you're still sitting, you need to active sit. Do you know what that is? Some of you do, which is good. Okay, we're gonna do this together. First step, you're going to, okay, I'm, gonna show, I'm gonna steal this chair, so there's chairs is. So you're gonna slide to the edge of your chair for me. So you're barely sitting. I mean, like, your glutes just barely touch the edge of the chair, okay? Then you're going to plant your feet down on the ground like so. Good, and you're gonna sit nice and straight. So now I want you to roll your shoulders back. Good. So we're not done yet. This is a, there's a lot going on with active sitting. So now uh, I would like you with your hand to touch your belly button. And that whole area that's around there has a lot of muscles and I'd like you to contract all of them. Your face should possibly show. Good. And I'd like you to contract your gluteus maximus. If you don't know what that is, your butt. Okay. I'd like you to contract that also. So now you're contracting your glutes and your butt and you're going to keep breathing. Don't stop breathing. Some of us are so, this is so much to take in all at once. So now that you're in that position, that's active sitting. So if you choose to sit now or any time from here on out, this is how you should sit. All right, are we good? If this gets too annoying, you can always stand. That's an option. Okay. So. Um, the standing, the act of standing part is, please make sure you stand properly, okay? So don't start doing this thing where you get in a really weird side position or whatever. Stand on both feet, okay? And kind of like Dr. Santana is doing, and kind of just sway a little bit. You shift your weight a little bit, right? And if you feel the rhythm, you can do that too, whatever works for you, right? But never try to kind of bend sideways or, you know, but move about, move about. Don't lock your knees. Okay, so now you, these are the two options. So again... All right, great job, Dominique. All right, before I continue with Dominique, I'm gonna welcome some people that have just joined us. I have Curtis Brooke, and you asked a question, what about the chemical used on fruits and vegetables? Well, we should not be so concerned. We need to wash the fruits and vegetables properly, but in terms of the health benefit you'll be receiving from consuming fruits and vegetables, that 
outweigh the risk of the chemicals you might be consuming. Lionel Dwyer, childhood friend from New York, welcome. My cousin Pauline Hogg from England, I want to welcome you. Please share and like our pages. Um, Maggie Yu, Sam Sun, Marisela Enright, all of you who are just joining us, Tam uh, Tamika, my niece from Jamaica, welcome. I can't see all the names, but I want to welcome you. Please remember to like and share the page. We're talking about healthy lifestyle, how you need to take action now, and that this show is to empower you with all the knowledge and education you need to live a healthier lifestyle. Now, Dominique was just speaking about active sitting. Did you know that 90% of people in the United States do not do regular physical exercise? Did you know that? And therefore, to make it easy for you, she gave some very simple things to do. If you are desk work and you're sitting most of the day, you are at risk for many diseases. So why not do active sitting? So she just described that. You sit at the edge of your chair, your feet on the floor, you must contract your gluteus maximus. Just hold it together, contract your abs and your shoulder back. In so doing, you're doing isometric exercise. And the longer you do that, the better it is. What about standing? She mentioned active standing. So if you're standing, don't just stand, but keep moving from side to side. In doing so, you're working the muscles and you will be exercising because we know exercise is medicine. You know, oftentimes patients will ask, you know, what is the best exercise? When to exercise? Well, the best exercise is the one that you will continue to do for the rest of your life. Remember, this show is empowering you to create healthy habits, not for a week or for 10 days or a month, but for life. So whatever activity you will continue for the rest of your life, that's what you need to do. Now, what's the best time to exercise? I get that question a lot. Really, I do believe that exercise should be priority. And you should exercise, I believe, and that's what I do early in the mornings. Because you're getting up fresh and more energized, and you should start your day on a positive note. If you leave the exercise for the evening, you might be home from work, and you're tired, and you're fatigued. There's so many things to do, and you probably will not get the exercise in. So I always advise my patient to do it the first thing in the morning. And there's so many health benefits for exercise, which you will hear in the show, whether today or as you continue to follow us. Remember to like and share the page because the information I'm giving you will save your life, your friend's life, or your family life. So remember to actively sit or actively stand because Inactivity is the fourth leading cause of death globally. So you might think, well, I don't have to exercise, but it does affect your health. Healthy nutrition in combination with other factors will produce good health and longevity. All right, so Sylvia Gordon, I want to welcome you. Mary Regalado, welcome Irene Desir, welcome all of you guys that are joining us. Please like, please share. This program is just to empower you. For you that are living here in the Rio Grande Valley, you can find me at one of my offices. If you have diabetes or you have someone with diabetes, if you're on a lot of medication, if you have high blood pressure, if you're overweight or have heart disease, and you're looking for help, because as I mentioned to you, that over 2,000 people die daily in this country as a result of heart disease. But yet we have tons of drugs. What is the problem? What is the solution? The solution is not another pill. The solution is healthy lifestyle modifications. I have several books with this information. So if you're not in the Rio Grande Valley, 
and you want information, go to my website, drdonnacooper.com. You'll find resources, books, 14 days to amazing health. You know, someone asked me, will you really see change in 14 days if you were to change your lifestyle? And I said, absolutely. I often give a story of a patient of mine, um, diabetic with breast cancer, thyroid cancer, miserable on her medication, came into the office. And I said, listen, I can help you if you follow my advice. I said, all right, I'll put you on a plant-based diet for two weeks with exercise, stress management, relaxation, more water, and so forth. She came back 14 days after, amazed, because she was feeling so good. I took her off the metformin, so her um, diarrhea subsided, and she could not believe that she was feeling so well. So yes, you can see changes in 14 days. Now, at the conference on Wednesday, someone asked the same question. How soon can you see or um, experience um, positive health benefit? And the lecturer said in, in hours, really, in many hours, you can see. So in less than a day, you can start seeing benefit. I've had patients who have told me the same thing. Hey, doc, my mind's, um, I'm thinking clearer, more alert, I feel more energized. Guys, why should you continue to feel sick and tired when you can do something about it. You don't need to go to the doctor and ask for a pill. You can start making the change at home. Yes, there are places where we use medication. I still use drugs for diabetes, hypertension, and all these things, because not all the patients will change lifestyle. So yes, medications do have a role, but the most important change you can make is changing your lifestyle. I'm going to find a slide that Dr. Dysinger used and I'm going to expose it to you for you to see the, the benefit from lifestyle medicine. Let's see if I could find that slide. I really want you to look at it. Um, let's see here. I can't find the slide, but in the meantime, let me welcome some other people that are joining us. Can't find the slide. So I want to welcome <laughs> Doreen again. Maria, Marie, Hilbert, Irene, share and like her page. Now, we had several speakers, and I think the next speaker is Dr. Santana. He spoke about um, lifestyle medicine and hypertension. And um, listen to some of the points he, he made on Wednesday, and then I'm going to come back and talk about a patient of mine with high blood pressure who changed his lifestyle and now doing well. Let's go to the next um, video. Without the use of salt shakers. This is kind of a, a more modern, a more recent type of problem. All right, the American Heart Association recommends how much salt per day? Less than 1,500 milligrams per day. And what does the American consume? About 3,500 on average. A lot of people consuming way more than that. So salt, Big problem. All right. If we were to tell our patients, cut back on just one half teaspoon of salt a day, it would reduce death by stroke by 22% and would reduce death by fatal myocardial infarct by 16%. Okay? That's more lives than with successful medical therapy. It's pretty outstanding. All right. How many medical students do we have here? All right, more specifically, how many of you are under the age of 25? Let's see your hands. All right. Statistically, if you live in the US, if you are under 25, you're a kid, adolescent, college kid, you get most of your salt from pizza. All right. If you are age 25 to 50, you get most of your salt from chicken. And if you're above 50, you get most of your salt from bread. All right. Now, we're going to take a test. Everybody take out your number two pencils. 
Okay, not really. But I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to name four foods. And of these four foods, I want you to tell me which one has the highest salt intake. Number one, a serving of ground beef. Number two, organic baked chicken breast. Number three, a large McDonald's fries. And number four, a serving of salted pretzels. Any brave people? Fries. Pretzels. Pretzels. All right. Here is the answer, and thank you all for participating. The American meat industry has realized that if they can inject cheap salt into meat, what happens? It increases weight and increases profit. Okay, so the right answer is the baked chicken breast. So that's pretty amazing. Um, those of you who are medical students, I have my physiology professor. He's somewhere around here. He'd be very proud of me. You remember that class on osmolarity and diffusion? What, all, what always follows salt? Water. So if you can put the salt in the meat, they gain water weight and you can sell more for less. Pretty impressive. So, the main problem we have is that we get three-fourths of our sodium from processed foods. And if you are an American, it is very... Wow. Did you get that correct? I must tell you that I did not get that uh, question correct. Did you know that? That the meat <laughs> industry injects salt in the meat? Hmm. Well, we have to be very careful. We know that we're over consuming salt. Even though you don't add the salt sometimes, you have to be very careful with these processed foods and this animal products because that is one of the main risk factors for many diseases. Now I have here the treatment triangle. I want the producer to put it on the uh, screen. I want you to see something with me because I know that you're accustomed to listening to uh, information on the food pyramid. What about the treatment triangle? Here you go. Can you see at the bottom, at the base of it, the most important factors to improve health and prevent diseases is really to use lifestyle. Lifestyle should be the foundation of your treatment. And then the lifestyle, it has nutritional factor, movement, that is exercise, and other information there. So you see then that as healthcare providers, as patients, as someone who wants to be healthy, the most important structural change that you need to make in your life to build a, a healthier weight or to prevent diseases is lifestyle. And then on top of that, some prescription and some medicine. Take a picture of this and keep it with you. And if your doctor does not believe in lifestyle medicine or emphasize in lifestyle medicine, I want you to show this to him. Let me take time to welcome some more people here. We have Martha Brooks. I see here um, Clinton Porter, a friend of mine, childhood friend. Um, Pauline Hogg, my husband, has, uh, let me see. I can answer that later on. But I want to welcome all of you that are joining us. I want you to share the information. We're discussing the secrets to good health, amazing health, and the reason for you to take action. Dr. Santana just went through just a, a small uh, portion of his lecture we are showing you on using lifestyle to prevent hypertension. Now, as I mentioned before, lifestyle medicine is now the basic, the first treatment option for many chronic diseases. Cancer, diabetes, heart disease, hypertension, obesity. And you know, one of the lecturers discussed, he opened with cardiovascular disease, and that's Dr. Jerry Tamayo. 
Cardiovascular disease, the leading cause of death here in the United States and other parts of the country. But he gave a question or a quiz. Is the disease modifiable, preventable, or curable with lifestyle? And of course, all three were correct. You can modify your, your problem, you can prevent the disease, and you can reverse the disease with lifestyle changes. So if you're listening to me and you know someone, or if you have heart disease, and you're on a lot of drugs, then you need to practice some of these same principles we're discussing. Change the way you're eating. Decrease the intake of animal product. Stay away from processed meats and processed food. Increase the intake of plant-based food. Do not overeat and move and manage your stress. Now, Dr. Bryce, I think he's up next. Dr. Bryce um, was fantastic, very good friend of mine. He um, is a board certified internist from Dallas and he discussed the real cause. What is the real cause of our diseases? The diabetes, the obesity, the depression. What's the real cause? And he mentioned um, mind-body connection, adverse childhood um, problem. Were you abused as a child? Did you grow up in a stable home with mother and father? Were you sexually abused or physically abused? Did you have problems growing up as a child? Some of these same adverse childhood experiences are the, the real cause of the obesity, the addiction to food. There are many patients who are addicted to food. I have a patient and um, she was overweight, she had high blood pressure, she had difficulty breathing, she has um, arthritis. And she was with me in my 12 weeks to wellness program. But I could not get this lady to lose any weight. So we discussed and she was in tears. She said, Dr. Cooper, I grew up very poor. We hardly had food to eat. So many nights I went to bed without um, food. And now that I can afford food, I find it very difficult not to consume the food. So she was addicted to the food as a result of her adverse childhood experiences growing up. So there are many reasons why we have these chronic diseases and I know that many of you listening to me probably find yourself into one of these categories and you have it very difficult. And that is one of the reasons why if you're doing an intensive lifestyle uh, treatment for any chronic diseases, we do have behavioral therapy as part of your treatment plan. Because as healthcare providers, we need to sit with you. We need to see what is the real cause of your problem. If you're overweight, how long have you been obese? And have you tried any uh, treatment option before? Have you failed and why? We have to sit and get to the cause. What is the real cause? And then tailor your treatment option. So, you know, there are many patients there that are overweight that have been trying to lose weight forever and just can't lose the weight. As healthcare providers, responsible healthcare providers, we have to sit with our patient and make the right diagnosis so we can treat accurately. Dr. Bryce also spoke about diabetes and how to um, treat diabetes with lifestyle medicine. Let's listen to some of what he had to say. Um, calorie restriction. In as early as six days, going into calorie restriction, you start reversing diabetes. So this is, this was thought it was showing the same thing in in reverse. All right. Um, trying to let me touch a little bit on sleep. Sleep is very important. I don't have time to go into this, but sleep disorder. If you're going to reverse diabetes you have to address sleep, okay? So this is something you gotta work with people in getting sleep um, good. So in summary, um, um, sleep management on sleep is very important. It takes a lot of time, but you have to work people through this. Uh, I'll tell you a quick story. There's a patient of mine that works at American Airlines and um, he goes to bed at 10 o'clock every night. 
He gets up at 2 o'clock and he starts working at 3. Blood sugar starts going up little by little over the years. And I tell Johnny, you've got to start sleeping. Ended up in a hospital with a blood sugar of 600. Came to the office with insulin, metformin, everything. He ended up coming to my office. He left my office and said, Dr. Bryce, I'm not taking any of these. He went home, came back three months later, no history of diabetes. I said, what happened? He said, Dr. Bryce, you've been talking to me for years now to sleep. Instead of going to bed at 10 o'clock, I start going to bed at 5 o'clock. Get an eight hour sleep, and the diabetes went away. Okay, it, 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 does, it does work. All right, so very briefly, two minutes on the Seventh-day Adventists. In the, in the Adventist Health Study, Half of the seven Adventists don't follow what their, teach, their church teach. They eat cheese, pizza, everything. But even this half of non-vegetarians and the seven Adventists, their rate is much less than the public. And the reason for that, they don't eat pork, they don't eat shrimps, they don't eat lobsters. So even though they don't follow the, the church's um, suggestion, but they still don't eat as much fat as the general public. And so their rate of diabetes is much lower. Those who follow their church's recommendation 100%, they have ridiculously low rate of, of, of diabetes. So within the Seventh Adventist um, system since, um, since um, June 21, 1863, they've actually recommended that they go for a walk after every meal. They recommended that they eat, don't, don't sleep, don't eat anything for five hours, before they go to bed. They actually had recommendation that you live on two meals a day. Um, 1867, I think, it was mentioned that seven adventures were eating too much sugar. At that time, people were eating 10 pounds of sugar per person per year. Now we're up to anywhere from 138 to 200 pounds of sugar per year. And from way back then, the seven adventures were saying that we're eating too much sugar. So you see, for those who follow the Seven Adventist principles, they have almost none, ridiculous amount of, um, of levels in going through this. All right, so let me mention this. I spoke. Very good, Dr. Bryce. Uh, he gave some statistics there. Do you see yourself as consuming over 100 pounds of sugar per year? But it's true. There is sugar in almost everything you're eating, all the processed foods. So that's the reason, one of the reasons you need to stop consuming processed food. Dr. Bryce mentioned his patient who came with a sugar of 600 and refused medication, came back three months later, and what happened? His sugar was controlled. The treatment, the number one, the most important treatment for chronic diseases is lifestyle changes. What you eat, when you eat, how much of the good food you're eating, and rest. It's amazing. About two or three weeks ago, a patient walked into my office, same story, elderly gentleman, high blood sugar, high blood pressure, and he refused medication. He said, Dr. Cooper, I don't want medication. I want to follow your lifestyle medicine plan. So I said, okay, fine. So we put him on his um, basic diet and exercise, stress management. He came back two weeks later, actually one week later, with the sugar, much better control, blood pressure down and weight down. So guys, if you're listening to me, this is the health miracle that you need in your life, in your family life, in your friend's life. This is the only thing that will save our country from the significant epidemic of chronic diseases. We spend billions of dollars on health care as a result of chronic diseases. Why is this so? Because of our Western lifestyle. One of the presenters on Wednesday presented significant statistics. I'm going to see if I can find it here and I'm going to show it to you about America and ah, here it is. If my producer can expose this slide to you, you could share it. You're going to see the difference here that healthcare costs in America is way above other countries. 
We have Spain, Sweden, UK, and Germany. But if you were to see, I don't know if you can find the slide so you can share it with you. If you look, um, we have here, ah, there you go, guys. Can you take a picture of that and keep it in your wallet? The reason for this is because of our lifestyle. I have gone to different countries in the world, and I, you know, for example, in Europe, well, some of the countries there in Europe, the most people walk. Not many people keep driving from here to there. That's one thing. The other thing, the fast food chains, we don't find that there. Look at the healthcare costs in America per capita versus other countries. Spain, Spain is in black. Look where Spain is. Then look at Sweden. Then you can go ahead and look at uh, England, UK, and Germany. Why is it that we are so many times over in, in terms of healthcare spending because of chronic diseases? We, th we say we have the best healthcare in the world, first class. We have the best doctors, the best hospitals. We have so many pharmaceutical companies doing studies and producing drugs. Why are we so unhealthy? Could it be because of what we're eating and the fact we don't exercise and the fact that we live in a very stressful environment? What is our problem? America, I want you to listen to this presentation. Guys, please do share. Share this information if you love your family, if you love your community, and if you love your country and the world. Share this information. It is absolutely vital. We do need to change the way we live. As healthcare providers, we need to change the way we practice medicine. As responsible citizens listening to me, you need to change your home, starting with yourself and your children. You need to change your community, your churches, your social club. We need to change our cities, and we need to change the region. We need to change our country. We need to change the world. It is not impossible. It takes one person at a time, one person to just light the spark, and you to tap in there and follow and join the movement. We must change. If we do not change this epidemic of poor, unhealthy lifestyle, our children will be dying young. They'll have shorter lifespan. We're going to have a generation that is sick. Studies have shown that the average American spend about 11 hours sitting. They have the sitting disease. And if they don't move, then the risk for many diseases, that's the risk, are way above normal. So I want you to help me educate. Help me change the landscape of our healthcare industry. I don't know if we have another video, but um, I want to remind you of my books. If you're not living close by, then you can find me online, drdonnacooper.com. My name is D-O-N-A. C-O-O-P-E-R dot com. These books are very easy to understand. In this one, I have a whole 14 days plan laid out here for you to follow. I have over 100 recipes. They're delicious. If you were at the Health Summit on Wednesday and you had the meal, the recipes came from my book. So you can eat delicious meals without missing the meat and the animal fat. I'll also have a section on exercise because exercise too is medicine, it's illustrated. I have three levels, basic, intermediate, and advanced. So you can find whatever you need and follow through. Meditation and stress management is important for good health. All that is included in this book. And if you just want to get recipes, then my 14 Days to Amazing Health book is here available for you. This book is more than a cookbook. It has 28 days meal plan, shopping list, and just many more. Guys, 
Yes, I am an internal medicine doctor, board certified in internal medicine. I have two busy practices and one lifestyle medicine practice. But I want to spend a lot of time educating because this is where I find my joy in seeing patients reducing drugs, feeling better, and doing well. Let me take the time to welcome some of our visitors that have just joined. Let's see if I can find them. Let's see here. Remember to like, share the page. Find me on Facebook and YouTube. Agnes, Agnes Day, you're always following. And I, I watch you, Agnes. You're doing a great job discussing food and exercise. So thank you, Agnes, for following. Um, Pauline, my uh, cousin from England, she mentioned that her husband wants her to stop from using the salt, but as of now, she will no longer add salt. Great, great habit to change. All right, um, <clears throat> Dr. Morales, you're joining me at the end. I want to thank you for watching. Marcia Scott, I haven't seen you in a while, but please share and like. We're discussing lifestyle medicine as the number one disease modifying factor to change the landscape of medicine. And I know you, Dr. Morales, that you also encourage your patient, you encourage your patient to use a healthier lifestyle. So guys, like, share the page, and I will see you again soon. I'll see you next week. If you have a special topic you'd like me to discuss, go ahead and do so. And remember, if you're not living in the Rio Grande Valley and you'd like more information, find my website. I do have online courses that you can, um, you can take in order to educate yourself on how to live a healthier lifestyle. And I have all these books I discussed. And remember, I forgot to tell you that at the Cooper Wellness Center, we are now preparing um, plant-based meals. So if you don't know how to prepare healthy meals, or you don't have the time, rather than moving towards um, something fast, unhealthy fast food, call us. Call us at 956-627-3106. 956-627-3106. Or go to the website, cooperwellnesscenter.com, and order your meals online. We have healthy juices. The juices are specially blended for hypertension for um, joint pain. We have juices for constipation, for cleansing, for blood pressure, for heart disease. Just call us, visit us at 3604 North McCall Road, or the website is there, get, get, uh, cooperwellnesscenter.com, and we will prepare your meal so you could use food as medicine. Guys, share, like the page, and I'll see you again soon. I'll see you next week. Until then, bye-bye.